As I was brainstorming and sketching ideas the other day, I came up with something that I think is pretty cool. And as you'll see here, I already have a good bit of it done. Let's take a closer look. On the sides here, you'll notice that I have some mirrors. These are actually really easy to incorporate into builds and can be cut exactly the same as glass. I scored them with the cutting wheel and snapped them along the edge of my workbench. After that, I sanded down the edges so they weren't sharp. I rinsed everything down to remove debris, which left me with two identical mirrors. The reason I selected mirrors for this build is that I felt that they could further help set it apart. Moving up, you'll see a glass cylinder that's already partially scaped with some materials. Now what this is is a candle holder that's open on both sides. When I came across it, I knew it would be perfect for this build. Anyway, prior to how you see it now, I had to account for it on the mirrors. To do so, I created these guides. They're pieces of PVC board that I traced the outline of the cylinders on. I created various openings in them with hole saws. Once they are made, I taped the guides over the mirrors so they could hold water. As I've explained before, the water keeps the drill bit from overheating as you work through the material. After all of that, I could secure one side of the cylinder to the mirror, as you'll see here. I applied a bead of silicone along the edge. Then I pressed it in place and let it sit overnight. At that point, I turned the piece upright and propped it up so I could skate. I decided to use Dragonstone for this one. Like usual, I had to be mindful of the directional nature of the stones. As I placed them in this dummy scape, I kept them all going in the horizontal direction to get a sense of how I wanted to design the layout. Once I had an idea of what I wanted, I removed the pieces and secured them one by one with silicone. I put a dab on each stone and locked them along the mirror in a cohesive structure. Then I moved over to the open side and repeated the process. After the silicone cured a little bit and the pieces were secure, I went on to attach the mirror on the other side like before. That allowed the piece to stand upright, but as you'll see here, I also have a tray on the bottom. As I created this, I had to be mindful of one thing. I needed a space under the mirrors so water can pass through. To do this, I simply attached PVC spacers where the corners of the mirrors go. With that addressed, I went on to add the side pieces. As I did, I made sure to secure them to both the bottom and the sides of the mirrors. That just about brings us up to speed, but there are a few more details such as this screen on the bottom hole. This is just a piece of window screen that I stuck to the side. Around this area, I also built an overflow box with three smaller pieces of glass. More on that later. Lastly, I attached pieces of glass to the front and back to build up the structure a little more. I had this all taped up while the silicone cured. Once I removed it, I scraped off any excess. And that brings us back to where we started. Now the way this is all going to work is I'll have a pump over in this area that will send water up and through this little opening here into the cylinder. The water is going to pass through this area where it will then overflow through the screen covered hole over here. That's why I built up that overflow box around this area. After the water flows down through here, it will pass under the pieces of glass back to the pump and the cycle will continue. Another detail worth pointing out is this hole here. Now I created that so I can easily finish scaping the system as well as maintain it when needed. As is though, none of this looks very nice. Luckily I planned for that ahead and it's an easy fix. I'll cover all of this with expanded PVC board. I like this because it's easy to cut with a utility blade and it's fairly inexpensive. Securing them to the glass was also as simple as applying some silicone and pressing the pieces together. I did this for most of them, but I attached a few with glue as well. This will be an all-in-one system, so I'll include this LED aquarium light as I construct the facade. I made a channel near the top that you can see here, so it nestles perfectly above the tube. I concealed all of this with another board, which I glued down. I'll cover this section in the middle as well, but before I do, I'll fill it with bags of lava rock. 
Leaving this empty would have been fine, but in theory, this extra surface area should help create a more stable environment. I left it all to dry after this. It looks a little better now, but since I made it with multiple pieces of material, there are inconsistencies. To address this, I mixed up some Bondo. I smeared this on to blend everything together and hide the seams. I had to go back and clean it up with an orbital sander. The result doesn't look much better than before, but that's alright. The entire reason I needed this even surface was to ensure this oak veneer will sit flush on the outside. This is another material that can simply be cut using a utility blade. The PVC board will act as a great substrate to attach this with rubber cement. I applied it to both surfaces and let it dry. Once it did, the pieces adhered on contact, providing a strong hold. I went around and covered all of the surfaces, which resulted in this. I think it looks pretty cool as it is, but there are some inconsistencies. You'll see a little bit around the viewing panel here, and around the doors on the sides. As you saw during the construction of this, I cut out all the pieces individually. Now what I should have done was cut the doors out after I attached this onto the outside, but you live and learn. Regardless, that should be an easy thing to fix. Basically, I just went around with various pieces of oak board and glued them in ways that conceal the edges of the veneer. Like I said, the primary things I need to address were around the viewing space and the doors. So I did exactly that. I also trimmed a few other areas, including the edges between the mirrors. The result after this made things appear more finished. I went and stained everything with a dark color. Once that dried, I sealed it up with a few coats of polyurethane. That's not all though. To refine the look further, I put a piece of window frost film on the back of the tube. I also secured a piece of PVC board over the opening in the back. I cleaned up the glass real quick, and here we are after all of that. I don't know about you, but I really like how it's turning out, but I still have some more work to do. I should probably start out by addressing the pump. I put the pump's tube into the left opening, filled it up, and let it rip. To my surprise, the flow looked great without any adjustments. Here you can get a look at how the overflow works as well. Let's finalize the design. I placed a few additional stones first to make it easier to build up the land. For that, I don't need much more than gravel and spoons. I keep these in my toolbox specifically for scenarios like this. While adding them, I move them around with a wire as needed. As I'm sure you could tell, the right side was easy enough. To reach to the other side though was a little more complicated. I used a spoon taped to a wire for this area. I use sphagnum moss to build up more height. This will also wick water onto the land, which creates a great growing surface for plants. As I did all of this, I made sure to leave most of the rocks exposed. I wanted them to be a prominent feature within the design. With all of that covered, I can move to the plants. The most prolific of the bunch will be this awesome thread moss. This will readily grow on stones in wet environments, so it's perfect for this build. As always, I absolutely love how it brings everything together. Honestly, I think this alone would work, but I want even more plants. Anubis Nana Petite seemed like an obvious choice. I placed them around the edges of the water feature to soften the transition into the land. I thought that adding a single Cryptanthus nubicola would help improve the sense of scale. A few tufts of live sphagnum moss added even more texture. You know how it goes by now. We can't go on without adding some Ficus pumula chrysifolia. Zooming out, I really like how it all came together. I just need to add sand in the middle area to cover the bottom. I sloped it up toward the sides while adding as little as possible. 
Then I topped all of this off with a few pieces of duckweed. I'll have to keep an eye on it though to ensure it doesn't take over. We're just about done here other than a few minor details. First I put a fine filter sponge in the overflow to trap debris. I can easily clean this as needed. I also covered the opening into the system with a coarse filter sponge. I'll have to come up with something cleaner later on, but this works for now. I wanted something that would still allow for air exchange, but seal it off from gnats and other bugs that may try to take up residence. Lastly, I added little knobs to the doors to make them easier to remove. The doors themselves fit fairly snug, so no additional hardware is needed. There you have it, the finished project. I think it's a cool little piece with a lot of character. My idea behind this was to have a mini all-in-one system that's elevated in a custom-built frame. Floating, if you will. That said, I wish I would have moved it further down to make that more apparent. I guess now I can just use it as a shelf for various trinkets. The interior, on the other hand, turned out exactly how I imagined. I wanted to include an arch and a lot of texture to give off a marshy type of vibe. I want to hear from you though. Let me know what you think about this project down in the comments. If you liked it, help support the video with a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time, Serpa Squad. Take care, and peace.